so my segment is going to be about how to implement moral development in the classroom. So I'd like to start with a quote from one of my articles that says, It is a mistake to think of morality as a set of external standards that adults somehow foist upon an unknowing or unwilling child. Most of our current moral education efforts fail precisely because of this mistaken yet pervasive assumption. So, it's important to understand that moral development is not simply the classroom rules at the front of your classroom um, that you tell the students and expect them to just follow. Moral development goes deeper than that. It's important that students understand those rules um, and how they relate to others. So the article goes on to say, developmentalists such as Kohlberg propose that the process of attaining moral maturity occurs over time if conditions are favorable for such growth. They also believe that a child's moral maturity is directly related to the way she thinks about concepts such as justice, rights, equality, and human welfare. Over time and through a variety of social interactions, children come to develop their own understandings of these concepts. Thus, their sense of goodness is constructed through their own thinking about their experiences and through dialogue with others about what these experiences mean. So the most important thing that you can get out of that is the line that says, thus their sense of goodness is constructed through their own thinking about their experiences and through dialogue with others about what these experiences mean. So, for example, if you have a student in your classroom that steals another student's pencil, it's important that you don't simply point to your classroom rule list and say, no stealing, and expect the child to get something out of that. Um, they won't. If you, the child who stole the pencil, if you talk to them and explain to them how the other person feels about them stealing the pencil, why it was wrong to steal the pencil, um, and you help them understand the rule rather than just telling them the rule, then they'll get a lot more out of that. Um, another thing that helps children's sense of goodness, um, it says children's sense of goodness is also fostered through encouragement offered by significant adults in their lives. One principal of an elementary school in Florida offers such encouragement at the end of his daily announcements by saying something like, remember children, be kind to one another. So it's important to understand that as a teacher, your students are going to look up to you a lot. You are a huge figure in their moral development. And so while it's important to help them dig deeper into the rules instead of just preaching them to them, it's also important that they know what the rules are. So saying, remember children, be kind to one another, um, that can be extremely important to a child, hearing that every day from their teacher. So. In summary of that part, teaching rules is not what moral education is all about. It involves, just as morality involves more than thinking, so does it involve more than a set of behaviors. We may be able to get children to do certain things or to behave themselves as we want them to, but that doesn't mean they've developed a sense of goodness or morality. Morality runs much deeper than behaving according to the rules set down by others. Morality includes a sense of justice, compassion, and caring about the welfare of others. It also includes perspective-taking ability, that is, the ability to discern how someone might be thinking or feeling. So, that ability to discern how someone might be thinking or feeling is extremely important to convey to a child. It is um, a great way to help them understand morals um, and to understand why they are important. So, back to the pencil thing, if they understand how the other person feels about them stealing their pencil, that can help them to understand why stealing the pencil was wrong. So, <clears throat> moving on, another article I read that was really important was about how it is a teacher's job to reach out to struggling students who are maybe not as developed morally as we would want them to be when they come to our classroom. I think we can all think back to when we were in school and there was that bad kid, you know, um, who just really seemed angry a lot of the time, I think. And instead of isolating kids like that who are not very morally developed and who do not have a great sense of right and wrong, um, it's important to reach out to them and to help them far more. So 
Many students have, who have trouble with their moral development need good adult guidance and influence in their lives. Too often we get frustrated with that kid and instead of reaching out and helping, the student gives up on them and stops helping, stops trying to help them develop morally. Adult influence is very important to the moral development of a student, as we talked about already. Um, it's important to understand the student's perspective in this kind of situation. There was an example in one of my articles um, that said, one student brought a gun to school because he had to walk by a gang on his way home and he was afraid. So obviously it's unacceptable to bring a gun to school, but it's also important that the teacher and administration listen to the student and understand his situation instead of just kicking him out and um, making him angrier at the world. Um, there's another example. One student had trouble understanding morals because they were only taught to him as they related to religion and God. And this student did not believe in God, even when he was younger. And so, especially when he was younger, he had no respect or care for the morals he was taught because they never related to him. They only related to the students who believed in God in his mind. So it's important that the teacher understand this about the student and teach him in such a way that he can understand morals and how to treat others, um, even outside of religion. So caring and understanding from a teacher has the potential to change a student's life, whether they are that bad kid or just a regular student that you encounter every day. Um, you have the power to change their life and it is so important that you implement this moral development in your classroom in such a way that the students will understand and they will be interested. The last article that I read talked about, um, there was, sorry, there was a person who implemented discussion about morals in the classroom. And these students were a little bit older. They were sixth grade, I think. Um, so not exactly elementary school, but you could apply the same thing in your classroom. They had discussion about um, some rules and some morals. And instead of the teacher telling them what the answer was in the situation, whatever moral situation they were discussing, the students worked it out and they came to their own conclusions and then the teacher would explain to them what the correct answer would have been or what the right thing to do would have been. And then they discussed it. And so this way children are actively involved in learning about morals and they're not, like I said earlier, they're not just being preached at. And it helps them understand the feelings of others, this discussion. So even in your elementary classrooms, you can have a rule and you can give examples of um, moral situations and you can discuss those situations with the children. And that way they are actively engaged and they are learning and they are doing so in a way that they can understand. So in Blatt did an experiment and it was the, one, the discussion with the sixth graders. After 12 weeks, over half of the students moved up a level. The children who developed the most were the ones who were the most interested in the discussion and learning more. So this relates to P, P, J, P. Edget's theory. Um, we've learned about him in class. Children learn when they are interested and curious. That's when they learn the most. So it's important to teach morals and rules in such a way that the child is engaged and interested. Engaging the students is important to their moral development and can make a great difference in the long run. So that's it on how to implement moral development in your classroom. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, have a great day. <laughs>